In the last video, I explained what autoimmune disease was. In this video, I want to talk about how to treat autoimmune disease and also go over what I've been eating for the last few days on the autoimmune protocol AIP diet. Okay, so treating autoimmune disease. I know when you have an autoimmune disease, it's really scary sometimes. Like you don't know what's going on with you. The symptoms can be so terrifying. Seems like everything's going wrong. You may have a doctor that's telling you one thing and you may be more inclined to do a more natural approach. And sometimes these two ways kind of conflict and it's totally normal and it's not something to really worry about. It's, you can use both of them in a complementary manner. So the three main ways that people typically put autoimmune diseases either into remission or get rid of the symptoms are via medicine, surgery, and diet and lifestyle choices. These things are not mutually exclusive. You can do them all at the same time. And depending on your situation, you may have to. For example, I have to take medication. I have to take thyroid medication because my body ate enough of my thyroid that I will never be able to produce enough thyroid hormone. So every morning I take my little pill that replaces my thyroid hormone. It's not like I've failed. And if you have to take medication or do surgery or something, it's not like you've failed. It is totally normal to take medication or have to use a surgical approach with other dietary and lifestyle changes as well. Medication can really help you too if you have a lot of pain, like if you have rheumatoid arthritis. And there are some times that medication may help initially with the symptoms so that you can get over the hump of being so much in pain or so put out by your symptoms that you can start feeling better and then you can add the dietary and lifestyle component to really kind of make it round out everything and make yourself feel so much better. And then maybe you can work with your doctor and wean off the medications. There are so many different approaches, but don't be afraid of taking a conventional approach along with a natural approach. Or if you don't feel like you need the conventional approach because your symptoms aren't that bad, then try the natural approach. Try just doing diet and lifestyle and see if that makes a huge difference or not. Many times the medicine approach can be more of a stopgap because it's more about symptom management to make sure that you don't feel your symptoms as much. It's not necessarily going to put your disease into remission and really help you feel better long-term. So that's where the diet and lifestyle really comes in because for example, with my thyroid medication, I was taking thyroid medication for eight years where they were saying it was helping my thyroid to replace my thyroid hormone, but yet the disease activity was still going on. So I had to use diet and lifestyle to put the disease into remission so it would no longer continue to attack my thyroid tissue. So now I have to take thyroid medication to replace the hormone that I can no longer produce, but my body is no longer harming my thyroid further. So that's the difference. The medication can help with the symptoms or to replace hormone or some other different things, but just make sure that the disease activity is also being quelled at the same time. If it is not via your medication, then that is definitely a time to start looking at diet and lifestyle changes as well. And if you're really into making the diet and lifestyle changes and your doctor isn't so on board with it, then either fire your doctor or there are a plethora of studies coming out now that show how much diet and lifestyle can really help with certain autoimmune diseases. So maybe find some of that information and bring it into your doctor and ask them to have an open mind and just have a conversation about it and see. You may be surprised that your doctor is willing to work with you on this. And there's always people like me, like health coaches that can help guide you into what to say to a doctor or other medical practitioner to really under, like be your own advocate and to understand the things that you need to be looking out for as well. But the main takeaway here is that medicine and surgery are not failures. They are totally good complementary methods of helping with autoimmune disease. And then the diet and lifestyle approach can work fantastically as well. Okay, on to me. So last time I said I was gonna go over this sheet and this is the sheet of all the symptoms that I started with in the beginning of May when I started this AIP effort. And it's day 18 now, so it's, it, I wouldn't say it's halfway through because I have a feeling I'm gonna probably get to like around six weeks before I start doing introductions, just because that seems to be the timeline for me to usually heal enough. Um, so it's not halfway, but I did want to go over some of these because they are going away. So I'm just going to read the symptoms themselves. The first one was still have some afternoon tiredness and sore throat. I really haven't had that lately. Like I've been feeling full energy the whole day long. Um, I remember I had that issue uh, like last week and the week before where I felt like I had a nap every day. I haven't had that at all. I just haven't felt completely fantastic and energetic yet, but it's been 
like steady energy throughout the whole day. Uh, dry skin, that is gone, like totally gone. Dry eyes, that is pretty much gone too. Even my son and my husband complained that they felt like they had dry eyes yesterday and I didn't feel that at all. So I really do think that is an autoimmune related symptom with me. I don't know if it means I have Sjogren's, which is also an autoimmune disease, or if it just happens to be a symptom of the other things that I have, but it's definitely gone away. Soreness and achiness in hands and all over, and the hamstring won't heal. But the hands, so I had soreness right here. It was really weird, like when I would drive, they would really kind of be like painful, and that's all gone away. And sometimes like my hands were starting a little sore too. That's gone away. My hamstring <laughs> is still a little tight, but it doesn't feel bad at all. And my back is feeling much better than it did the other day. Brain fog, I still have a little bit of that. And that's where I think the six week mark is gonna be good for me because I always seem to manifest a lot of my symptoms in my, my brain, like with inflammation and just brain fog and not being able to articulate things very well. And so six weeks seems to be the place for me to get rid of all that. Brittle nails, that one's too hard to figure out just yet. That's too soon. Hard time articulating, just went over that. Sometimes lack of motivation, that's gone again too. I, for some reason that starts in the very beginning of all these diet efforts. And I think it has to do with blood sugar and things like that, but I've been feeling plenty motivated, so that's not a problem anymore. Some heart palpitations, haven't really had them at all. Keep my monthly cycles at 28 days. Uh, that one, I got my period and it was 26 days this time. Not ideal, but I think that's a reflection of how I ate last month. Didn't eat so well, because I had the, the corn and dairy back in there again. Um, I always feel like these things take a little, like are a month lagged. So hopefully next month I won't have the spotting and hopefully the, like, the time will go back up. And gas and bloating. I still have a little bit, but it's significantly reduced from where I was before I started this. So that's that. I, I'm pretty happy with where I am for 18 days into this. I feel like the, the changes are a little bit more subtle than they were for Whole30, but then Whole30 was the first thing I did after like six months of eating terribly. So I think that, you know, when you do an effort like that, it just kind of bam, whoa, like you see these major changes in your face. And then now it's just kind of the fine tuning kind of stuff. I think if maybe you were to do AIP straight from doing the standard American diet or something like that, you may see a lot bigger of changes. I know the first time I did the AIP diet back in 2014, I saw major changes in the first few weeks. So don't take my results as typical, but don't also get discouraged if that's what you're seeing as well. All right, on to what I ate for the last few days. Breakfast every morning has been that plantain beef comforting casserole from the Healing Kitchen. I've just got that up and have that every single day. Lunch on Wednesday was a bowl of leftover chicken, which I had roasted with the garlic and herb seasoning blend by Primal Palette. And so I had like a leg of that with the leftover scalloped potatoes from the Healing Kitchen over a bed of mixed greens with some olives, blueberries, strawberries, and a little bit of uh, ozuke citrus sauerkraut. Because I did have my period, I tend to get a lot more hungry during that period of time. And so I let myself have more snacks when I need that. I just, it's something that I've really kind of realized that I need more at that time. And I'm fine with that. I don't generally have snacks these days because I just am not hungry, but I've been starving the last few days. So I had a snack of a English muffin, the AIP English muffin, uh, with some of the tiger nut butter on top of that, with some sliced bananas and carob chips. Dinner that night was mashed cauliflower with beef stroganoff. The recipe was by Jennifer Robbins from her Instant Pot cookbook, and it's one of our favorites, but the recipe does call for ketchup, black pepper, and Worcestershire sauce. So I made the Worcestershire sauce from the Healing Kitchen, so that way I could replace that. And then when I made the stroganoff, I omitted the black pepper and the ketchup at first. When it was all done, I put it into, I put my part into a separate container and had enough for that dinner and leftovers. And then into the part that was still in the Instant Pot, I added the black pepper and the ketchup so that way my family would not be all freaked out that they were missing that part of it. So again, breakfast the next day was that casserole. And then lunch was leftover scalloped potatoes, a little bit of leftover mashed cauliflower, the beef stroganoff, some of the chicken, some blueberries and mixed greens. Again, I felt hungry in the afternoon, so I was trying a pancake recipe for AIP and I made some AIP cassava flour pancakes. I think they're close. They were really good. My kids really liked them and I, I liked them too, but I feel like they, I want them to be a little bit fluffier. So still gonna be working on that one. And then dinner last night was 
uh, spiced chicken meatballs from the Healing Kitchen, along with a kale and sweet potato salad that we love by Deliciously Ella. Now, Deliciously Ella is a vegan blogger, not an AIP blogger. Um, and the recipe calls for sun-dried tomatoes and pine nuts. But we made the dish and we omitted the sun-dried tomatoes and the pine nuts at first. And then we, again, put off a portion for me. And then my husband added the sun-dried tomatoes and pine nuts into their portion, into my husband and kids' portion, so that they could have that as well. So this is an easy way to kind of customize things for somebody on AIP and the rest of the family who's not. It's just to kind of spread them out so that way not everybody has to have the same thing. Then breakfast this morning was the casserole, lunch was left over chicken and kale salad, and then dinner tonight I'm going to be making empanadas from this Latin American paleo cookbook, which is by Amanda Torres, and I'll be doing that with some parsnip and sweet potato fries for me, and then regular white potato fries for my family. And that's it. I'm expecting a shipment from Paleo on the go today because I kind of freaked out last week after Mother's Day when that whole fiasco of the salmon not working and just not having enough time. So I'll get that and I'll hopefully I'll either share that with you tomorrow or next week.